Now to President Biden endorsing a ceasefire plan for Gaza. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is now under pre increasing pressure to take steps to end the war. Our chief White House correspondent Mary Bruce has more for us there in Washington. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Robin. Well, President Biden is extremely eager to end this eight-month war that has rocked the region and created a foreign and domestic crisis for him. And he is now blowing these negotiations wide open, detailing publicly what is on the table with the hopes that it will pressure Hamas and Israel to agree. But this morning, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is facing fresh, fresh pushback that's really putting him in a very difficult position. Look, President Biden outlined a three-part plan that could ultimately lead to a permanent ceasefire and the release of all hostages. Biden saying bluntly that Hamas has been significantly degraded, that they aren't capable of carrying out another October 7th attack, and that it is time to end this war. Now, the White House is adamant, insisting that this was the Israelis' proposal. And while they aren't rejecting it, they say their conditions have not changed. They want to see Hamas's military and governing capabilities completely destroyed. And now two far-right Israeli leaders say they will bring down Netanyahu's government if he agrees to this deal, meaning the Israeli prime minister this morning is potentially being forced to choose between a deal that could end this war and the future of his own government, Robin. It does seem that way. And Mary, President Biden, we know he's heading to France tomorrow. Yeah, he heads out to France tomorrow. He's going to be there to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the Allied Forces D-Day invasion. Of course, a critical turning point in World War II. French President Macron is also hosting an official state visit for President Biden. Robin, it's another busy week ahead here. It is. All right, Mary, thanks to you.